What is going on, everybody? Bobby Pye with my man, Eric Sheets Haber. We're going to be talking through tonight, Monday's NBA slate. Good to have you all here. It feels like it. I, I didn't play on Friday. I didn't play on Saturday. I didn't play on Sunday. So now I'm ready to get back in there and ready to, to make some money, hopefully. Um, sometimes you just got to take a little little break when you, when you when things aren't going your way. Sheets, how are you doing? And uh, then we'll get into the slate. So basically, Luca is out. Irving is out. Curry is out. And Bobby Fye is in. Right. So, so we're, we are, that's what we need. You need the entire rosters of the NBA to change. Um, and, and they pretty much have, um, and we're ready to get after it. I had a, just a, nothing I could do about it. It's like all of my golfers just collapsed in like the last day, pretty much. So I'm basically fighting to break even after having delusions of winning the whole thing. Um, but that's the way golf is sometimes just don't have, uh, don't have Justin Rose and he's just freaking running away with the tournament. Um, and that's the way that goes, but I am ready to deal with the, uh, the new, the new NBA, the new players. Um, the Kyrie has finally, uh, got his wish. Um, he's out of Brooklyn. I, I don't know exactly what he's trying to accomplish, but, um, yeah, playing, I, playing I, with Durant wasn't good enough. He's, he's going to play with Lucas, see if that works out any better. Um, <laughs> and we shall see. Yeah, it's going to be wild over this next week. And don't be surprised. We always say, like, keep an eye on your lineups until the games lock and everything. That's especially true right now because we got the trade deadline coming up. The All-Star game's coming up. You're going to see a lot of weird stuff and lineups that are very unpredictable. So, uh, you know, we're going to do the best we can that for our first look. And then we'll be live at 6 and 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 go over some of the more detailed stuff. Please like and everything for the videos. And Cheats, with all that, you ready to go game by game here? Yeah, a couple of things. Uh, just I guess we could, we could have talked about this offline, but I know that that Rody put like a coupon code up there to yep. get people, and people have been signing up. And I was I did the live stream. Just dude, it was like a freaking on a Sunday for basketball with like no, with like nothing else going on really. No, like like forty people in there. Oh, um, beautiful. So people, yeah, so people are. Uh, I appreciate that everybody coming to to sweat the live the live stuff and asking questions and things like that. So, like I said, I mean, we we try to look for like the best thing to do, and 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 stuff like that. Like when you guys show up and like it, that that's that's the most important uh, motivation. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, so you keep doing that. We'll keep we'll keep uh, we'll keep on uh, keeping on. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm sharing my screen. Um, it's uh, it's uh, it's a slate with 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 no Dallas players, you know, and 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 no Golden State players. So that's gonna. And and no Brooklyn players, so <laughs> that's that's going to probably uh, generate most of the action. But we'll just take it game by game and see what we got. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we'll yeah we'll get into it because there's a lot of uh, a lot of potential ways to go with this slate. Let's just say that. All right, you ready to start off with Cleveland, Washington? Yeah, I mean, this is going to be a a common theme, but I mean, with all these other better plays. Uh, it's going to be hard to find guys. Although I will say <coughs> that I'm getting a pretty good projection on Darius Garland. Um, Why is the projection so high? I on don't Darius? know. I, I just don't know. I understand um, with Laverda, but why is it like, why is Garland projected so much higher than Mitchell? I don't exactly. Yeah, I can't, I can't quite imagine that either. Um, but right now that's what I have. Um, I just don't, it just doesn't feel like, <laughs> like the right thing to do. Put it that way. Um, as far as Washington goes, I mean, I don't really have anything. I mean, Porzingis, I have him as like my 25th best value or something like that. That doesn't really do much for me. Um, as far as spend down, I mean, I, I don't play Corey Kispert. Um, I don't really have too much uh, in, in this game except for Garland, who I not particularly, you know, I, I just think something's fishy about that projection. Go ahead the yeah, I I mean, look, if somebody from against Washington literally goes nuts every night, it doesn't matter, <laughs> whatever, whoever it is, there's somebody who's going to go nuts every night against them, it feels like. Um, we had, I think, I think that was the Cam Thomas game over the weekend, or maybe, mm. yeah, that was the the big one, I think. Uh, I, if it was me, I'm siding with Mitchell. Uh, I'll tell you that right now, especially if, if projections and ownership were like this. I actually like everybody on the Cleveland side. I think you could make a really good case for Garland, Mobley, Allen, and Mitchell. I think Mobley is is very reasonable and and maybe like I don't know maybe by maybe it's one of those plays that looks good early in the day that by the end of the day people are sort of off of but I don't know if anybody's aware like Mobley is uh he's basically like a 40 plus fantasy point machine he's 7200 that seems very very fair it's a great matchup um 
So I, I'm into the Mobley a little bit. I'm I'm into Jared Allen. And I'm just going to have to decide when we go through the rest of the slate how much of these guys I want. Because every one of them looks, looks like really good plays. But it's just we have extreme situations here. So I don't know which ones make it. At first look, though, Mobley and Allen – I'm sorry, Mobley and Mitchell are my two favorites. And on Washington – this is not the slate to me to play Corey Kispert. This is not the slate to play these guys. If you're going to take a flyer on anybody with upside, maybe Kendrick Nunn. That's if Beal is me, out. Meanwhile, meanwhile, Beal participated in shoot around this morning. You, and he may be traded by the end of the day. So we don't even know what's going to happen here. <laughs> Although I, I have a hard time believing they're going to be able to get off of Bradley Beal at 50 million a year, which I still don't understand why they did. Um, but yeah, as of right now, I don't have a whole lot of interest in Washington, but I'm very interested in all the four Cleveland guys, um, but particularly Mitchell and, and, uh, Mobley. All right. Next we got Boston Detroit. You want to, you want to start us off here? Tough game script for Tatum. Um, that being, you know, it's an 11 point spread and, uh, uh, they might not need to play him the whole game. Um, but good slate for Tatum in that, you know, you have, a lot of value, you know? So, right. so if you want to quote unquote overspend for somebody, this is the slate where you can get away with it. Um, so, so that's my comment on that. I, I still don't like Tatum as much as some of the other spend ups, but you know, I, I, I think it's, I mean, I'm looking at a real low ownership projection on him. Um, and I mean, Detroit is a good matchup, right? So if you do get the full minutes, um, he's going to be able to put up a lot of fantasy points. Um, aside from him, not really getting it too much. I shouldn't even say that. I'm not getting anybody except for him on this on either side of this game. Yeah, a lot of plays that look okay, like Horford, Robert. Are we maybe underestimating Robert Williams here? Like, this is a, a really good matchup. Excuse me. Um, and Robert Williams has you know the the, the things taken off. It's it just the matchup made me kind of interested, but I don't think I'm actually going to do it. I think actually, if I had to play anybody, it'd be Jalen Brown on the Boston side. Um. And on the other side, uh, again, Killian Hayes is, is way down in price on another slate. I feel like he'd be the massive chalk. Um, I don't know, even off the bench at 4,600, but I, I just don't know if I can do it. Like there's just too many other things out there. So I guess this game is, a, is, is not happening in, in my opinion, but it, you know, I, I think Jaden Ivy's fine. And a lot of plays that look fine, but there's just so many other guys. I mean, we had that one slate where we had, you know, what, 10 games or something, and there was nobody projected at 6X value. Today, it's, like, hard to find a team where there's not, like, three guys projected with 6X value. So, and Detroit is one of those teams. But I don't I don't feel like I need to play any of them. If I wouldn't hate hit ending up with either Ivy, Hayes, or Duran, but I just don't think it's the right slate for it for me. All right. Uh, next up, we have – do we have Cam Thomas? Yeah, so what's his name? Um, so Kyrie is now gone. Durant remains out. And and even Simmons remains questionable. Um so this is a this is a this is a game where you're gonna have a lot of I mean, there's gonna be guys that show up and you gotta watch who's starting, you know, whatever. But let me just throw some names out there. So uh Edmund Sumner at forty five hundred rates to be a good point per dollar play. Um Cam Thomas at five K. Um he only had well. The thing he has going for him is the thing he has going against him. Uh, in that, came off a monster freaking performance uh, in his last game, the 44, uh, 44 real life points, fifty seven fantasy points, and I mean, quite honestly, I, I could I couldn't imagine him not given the opportunity to do something similar with, with all the players out. You know, so um, uh, he's going to probably be one of the one of the popular guys, and uh, I you know it's certainly going to project decently. Um, also, other guys, uh, Claxton, I suppose, Royce O'Neal. Um, and then, you know, we have to uh, we have to keep talking about uh, about what's his name about about TJ Warren. Like, so he's probable. You know, it's it's a game where you know, listen, they don't even know what they're they're waiting for players to come back. You know what I mean? Like, they don't. This is like a total. I don't want to say throwaway game, but it's a game that's like you know whatever. Maybe this is a game where they just like run him out there you know, for 35 minutes, who the hell knows, you know? Um, I mean, he hasn't played that much like in combination the whole season. Um, but uh, with, with no usage to be found anywhere on the team, except maybe, I don't know where, Cam Thomas. Cam Thomas. 
Yeah, yeah Tom's had a forty-five percent usage rate in the last game. <laughs> yeah, maybe TJ Warren. Maybe this could be him. So I uh, listen. There's going to be going to be a whole bunch of guys that you could choose from on Brooklyn. I'm curious to get your take on it. And then if you want to, you know, if you want to run it back on the other side, you're gonna, you, you're dealing with uh, you know, Paul George who just projects okay. Um, but in a stack, uh, in a stack situation, I would definitely run it, run it back with him. Yeah. Um, I agree with you. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm on this. I, I, I think Sumner and Thomas are both really good plays. Uh, just especially without Seth Curry also like, and, and, and Simmons is still questionable. Let's not forget. He's missed, you know, what, four or five games now in a row. Yeah. Yeah. And if he's out, even that just opens up, I mean, it just keeps it even more open. And you'll see these projections go even higher. I'm very into Sumner and Cam Thomas. I don't expect Cam Thomas to be as, but I like I've been the beating the Cam Thomas drum. Why don't they let this guy play when these other guys are out? Because I think he's like an elite level shot creator. He's just trying to, he's just young and he always seems like he's trying to figure it out. Maybe he figured something out because uh that that's an unbelievable game that he had the other day. And he also he did it in 29 minutes. Sumner's the obvious one. I think that Cam Thomas is the next one I really want. On the other side, I think Paul George is a really good play. Um, and that's, like you said, it was a run back. I don't think I'm getting into any of the other weeds with the other Brooklyn guys yet. Um, everybody else on Brooklyn, I just feel like meh about. And they're going to play They're gonna play enough guys. Um, but I think Sumner and Thomas are just the way to go, personally. Um, so Sub- Sumner, Thomas, and Paul George, I, I'll, I have all those guys as priority plays right now. It does feel weird, though, when I think of Paul George versus a potentially Levertless Cleveland team and Mitchell and uh, Garland. One of those two are like versus Paul George at, and their cheaper prices. I think those are really, really close decisions. So I, I, I like all of those plays. But I, I, you know, like I said, I like Paul George, but I don't think it's like a I'm not going to I'm not going out of my way to say, OK, I need to have him. But at first look, he does look like a really, really good play. Um, all right. What do you have next? The, uh, uh, San Antonio, right? Yeah. yeah I mean, it, it, it look, listen, when, if I don't even run anything, I mean, you would think that Levine is, is cheap enough at 8k. I don't know why I'm getting a hopeless projection on him. I, I can't, I, I don't know what's going on there. So I'll take another look. So when I look at it right now, I, I see the whole game is kind of being a bad, a bad game, but I don't know why it would be. I mean, it's too, it's not the totals bad. It's like 237. Like the eye test, just I'm just staring at the at the salaries, and what's what's wrong with the, with you, these guys? Like the Rosen under nine k. Listen, it's not the same thing because you know it's not in San Antonio, but you know, listen, he's still seeing pop. You know, all, all the whole thing. You know what I mean? Um, he could have a good game. Levine could have a good game. Um, eighty one hundred just seems awfully cheap for Levine, even though I'm not projecting that way. Um, uh, so like as far as my numbers go, not much in this game. But I'm gonna have to take another look at this. Yeah, this is interesting. Um, it, it, honestly, Keldon, like that's weird. Like I, I'm, I'm not overly interested in everything on anything on San Antonio, but again, I love to try to attack the Bulls in general. So they only have ten guys right now. If Keldon and Keldon Johnson's questionable, like legitimately, if he's out, I think you got to play Trey Jones um, or somebody. Um, for me, Trey Jones is probably the most logical play in this game, <laughs> as always. No issue with any of the Bulls, but I'm not – none of them hit the the priority chord for me. Uh, Levine certainly could have a monster game. He's probably going to be crazy popular on FanDuel where he just looks like he makes a lot of sense. And I think on, on DraftKings he's going to be lower owned. Um, but I think that, you know, these guys are all fine. It's just I, – I just don't – on this slate, none, nobody makes the priority list for me here. Um, I might need to revisit that with the San Antonio, Trey Jones, and Keldon Johnson both being questionable. That obviously could change things if they only have eight guys. But as of right now, nobody who's a priority, which is weird because it's a big total and you game you'd think you'd want some pieces of, but I'm not, I'm not getting there. All right. What do you got next? Like Sacramento, Houston. Boy, this is, I mean, just, you just hear those two teams' names and you feel like you got to play somebody, right? <laughs> yeah, I think that you got to hear. I think the guys I want to play are the two centers um, for openers. Um uh Sabonis and uh and Sangoon. And I think Sangoon is he might he might outscore Sabonis here. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like uh I like both these guys today. Um what what else is there? Uh I don't really I'm not gonna do the 
the Mitchell thing, um, I, I don't really have too much. I mean, it's it's like you said, it's kind of want to play somebody. You see here Houston in Sa at Sacramento. I don't know who else to play though. Um, so for me, it's going to be probably Sabonis or probably Sangoon or who knows, maybe play both of them. Yep. Um, I think that, yeah, they both look, okay. So I do think Sabonis definitely looks reasonable, like a, like a good spend up on this kind of a slate. I just want to throw out that his number of like good games, I know it's a great matchup and he's, you know, he, for what it's worth, he put up 73 and 55 the last two times he faced Houston. It's a, it's a really good matchup for him. It's just like, I, okay. So I think the Saberson projections are a little bit broken this morning. Like everybody's project, like Sabonis is projecting at 65. Like that's ridiculous. Yeah. You know, but like he can get 65 possibly, but he should never be middling out. And I don't know why Harrison Barnes is projecting for 37 fantasy points on there, but like, yeah, I, I have Sabonis overall at like 56, which is that makes more sense. Seems a little more reasonable. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I like these guys. Do they make the, the priority list for me? Um, uh, to TBD, uh, I'm, I'm TBD with uh, with Sabonis. Everybody, I mean, you you do, you do have no Fox, so like it, you know, I'm kind of interested in why Terrence Davis doesn't look like a better play. Um, and I and I mean, we saw this happen the other day where, and you know, he, I, I understand that he didn't play. He's not really getting the minutes. That's the thing that's frustrating. It's really hard with these guards, and and I was sort of suspect suspect on the the Mitchell thing the other day. He plays the minutes, but he just, it's so, he just never gets there. <laughs> like, um, so I feel like you're supposed to do something and maybe it's as simple as you said, maybe it's just Sabonis or Shangoon on the other side, because those are the ones I can most get my head around. The problem with Shangoon being chalky is he has a very wide range of outcomes in general. Um, foul trouble that they, they occasionally just don't play him and, and you don't know when that's going to come. So it's a little tricky here today. Another one of these these games where I feel like they would look a lot better on, you know, most slates that we faced. But, like, it feels like a game stacking spot and I can't figure out who I want to play. Maybe Jalen Green on one side and and then on the other side, Sabonis. Maybe that's maybe that's the way to go. But as of right now, I'm having a hard time committing to anything here. Um, and it's more because we just have so much value in Dallas. I can spend up and get my and in and, and Brooklyn. I can spend up and get my guys. So. I'm 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 lower on this game than I sh probably should be, but I probably will build one stack with this game in it. Um, and and I do think Sabonis, I mean, obviously is is probably going to be a cash game play for most people. All right, uh, do we get to talk about Dallas yet? We will do that right now. All right. All so right. so I mean, we have no. There's nobody around, right? So there's no there's no um, no Luca, and there's no. Uh, Spencer Dinwiddie anymore, you know, so here are the guys they're going to project. But first of all, let's take care of the guards. So Jalen Hardy, I have him, Jaden Hardy, I have him projected like a, like a million X at 30, you know, at 3,400. I have even Frank Nicolina projecting okay, um, as as you might imagine. Um, and Josh Green has been has been projecting okay, and he continues to do so. But I, I have to think that the um, – I have to think the two guys are going to be Tim Hardaway Jr. and presuming he plays uh, Christian Wood. All right. So you have, um, I don't know if, if he's going to be back a hundred percent Christian Wood, but if he, but if he is like, this is the situation where, you know, like Luca with a hundred percent usage is out. Right. And, and then typically when Luca is out, you know, you have Dinwiddie that picks up the hundred percent usage. And now they're both them are out because Dinwiddie's not there. We have Luca coming back soon and now we're going to have Kyrie coming over and this is the last opportunity for these guys to take like 100 shots before these guys before all these guys come back so I think like like Hardaway and Christian Wood you know what I mean like they're going to combine for 80 shots like if they're in the game you know what I mean um so I I, I would I would play those guys um specifically Hardaway um actually you know if, if I should I have no reason to not play Christian Wood if he's playing unless there's something we, we see about him having a minutes limit of some kind. Um, so those are the two main guys. And then, you know, those, those, those values like Jaden Hardy, I, I don't want to play Nicolina if I don't have to. Um, so I guess the Hardy at 3,400 seems reasonable enough. Mm -hmm. um, and then just the Josh Green. So uh, I don't think this is the day I have to play Powell. Um, well, what do you like here? 
Yeah, I'm, I'm on the uh, the Jaden Hardy, Josh Green side of things. Um, I, I I feel like it's hard with with how low you know you see Green's usage, and people are going to say this again. I promise you, when we go live later, people are going to be like, "Oh, but Josh Green's usage is so low." Sheets, you understand this from coaching basketball. If you take away the guys who make up 80% of, you know, the ball handling, the shots and everything. And by the way, Christian Wood may still be out again. <laughs> like it well, might be better than this, you know? So right now it's Josh Green and Jaden Hardy as priorities for me. I feel, and even Nilakina, I, I feel is, yeah, the minutes will probably be there. I don't, I'm not even a hundred percent sure what they're going to do, whether they start him or not in this situation, because they're going to need some offensive scoring. But if Bill is really projecting at like 25 minutes, which is what I've, I'm seeing him at, he shouldn't be projecting at 25 fantasy points or 23 fantasy points or 20, whatever. Bill I think, is a little bit uh, – is is the one I'm more willing to fade. I, I think that Josh Green and Jaden Hardy are my two favorites. If Christian Wood plays, I'm absolutely okay with it. I also think there's a really good chance Utah just absolutely blows the doors off of them here. And Kelly Olenek is 4,100 now – it's a, it's getting to be a little bit too cheap. I know we haven't seen the big games well, since Kessler's been sent to center. Um, I don't know. I actually think Kessler's an interesting play. I think there's a lot of like interesting plays on Utah, but that's just sort of like every slate it feels like. Um, uh, so I, I'm i like yeah, Clarkson, you could talk me into. I definitely could be talked into a Linux. I, I think that Walker Kessler is probably my favorite just because of the ownership and – I mean, this guy has a monster ceiling. You're going to see, a, again, wide range of outcomes guy, uh, especially if Vanderbilt's out, though, and he's still questionable. Both Olenek and Kessler are really interesting to me. So, I, you know, if I end up playing more than two Dallas guys, I'd like a run back. And I'm just going to have to try to see if which one of these guys I'd, I'd, I'd like to go with. But realistically, my thoughts on this game are that this could get scary bad. This could be one of those, you know, 110 to 70 kind of a games. Um, maybe not 70, maybe a hundred, maybe the modern day version is that 125 to 85 or something. I, I think it could get really, really ugly, really, really fast and makes it a little bit tricky to, to try to, to pinpoint who you want from Utah, if that's the case. So I'm more on just the Dallas guys, Jaden Hardy should be, should be blowout proof. Josh Green, probably not blowout proof anymore, but, uh, I think Hardy is my favorite and Josh Green's my second in this game. I guess that's my well, long why, now, just, just for the people that are listening, so what, why why would you say that uh, Hardy is blowout proof, but Josh Green, when you said it's not anymore, because he's become like a bigger part of the team, and so they want to. Josh you know, Green's a regular starter who's been playing regular minutes all year long. Jaden Hardy hasn't, but he's actually more of a shot creator. So if they get given the opportunity, he should be really good point per minute, and he should play like, yeah, there's some sort of blowout run where he's out of there. Where if he's playing with the unit right before, and then they're down by forty, of course he'd be, you know. But most likely he ends up on the court at the end or towards the end of the game. I don't want to say no matter what, but I'd say more more often than not, I think that would be the case even in a blowout. So that's my person. I think he is. I think he's not entirely blowout proof, but I think he's. Mo I think he's the more blowout proof of the, of the bunch. And uh, I, I did uh, get to the same uh, as far as my favorite Utah, just on a point per dollar basis. I think that um, I agree with you. I, I think Kelly Olenek at forty one hundred is very. Uh, Obviously, it's a very, very cheap price. Um, the other guy that's showing up for me is guy I don't play too often, but Mike Conley's cheap enough, I guess. But I, yeah, I agree with you. I think I think Olympic would be my favorite. Um, but no, actually, that. But then you know, you did mention also Walter Kessler. Walter Kessler, I mean, you have the benefit of him being going to be like five percent owned on a slate like this. So um, yeah, so let's throw let's throw that like just let's think about it for a second. So, so Conley, like early on, looks like he might get some ownership. Walker Kessler looks like he'll get nine. Conley consistent, by the way, has been really good at, he's just been in that over 30, like basically every game for a couple of weeks now. Walker Kessler has like a 50 over a 50 ceiling. I don't see Mike Conley getting 50 fantasy points anytime soon, unless like half of Utah ends up out or something. Walker Kessler just put up 50 the other day. Like he can, he's going to have a wide range of outcomes, but that upside is really, really intriguing. And uh, I think it's kind of an interesting play that no one, that I don't expect anyone to really be on. The problem is, again, the, the blowout and the fact that Utah has 700 players available. Um, all right. Milwaukee in Portland. Is that what you I actually, I actually have the Golden State game first. All right. Talk about the Golden State st stuff then. Yeah. So, um, no uh, Curry. Um, I currently am getting 
Jordan Poole as overall the best play probably on the slate right now. Um, and then uh, OKC, I, I, I'll get to more Golden States in a minute, but OKC, I think Shea, again, because there's value out there, I think you can get to him. And I don't see his ownership being too high. So uh, I like that. Other guys on Golden State, um, Wiggins may be my next favorite at 5,800. Uh, Kuminga, perhaps. Clay, perhaps. But but it's, it, you know, Jordan Poole is obviously going to project to be a, a very, very strong play, and he's going to be a million percent on, so we, gotta, we have to deal with that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where I'm at in this game. Yeah, no, no problem. We just saw this like not long ago. We did a show talking about this, this, this game. And, and I, and I think that like, okay, so there's the suspect value in Jalen Williams, because we don't know, even in this matchup, they can go small. We've seen them do it over and over again. Um, and is it, if Jalen Williams ends up starting though, it, you know, I guess you could consider him. I think that the real play is I actually think Giddy is the best play on OKC. And I think that Shea is the next guy I would choose. Um, but, uh, on the golden state side, it is interesting because we've seen Jordan Poole and he's been really good in these situations where there was no Wiggins and there was no, there was, but there was no but Wiggins. There now was they no, have guys, right? Yeah. They, they still have Draymond. They still have, uh, uh, clay in there. So it's, it, I don't think it's some sort of like a lock play, but I think one of cool, one of Poole or Wig or, 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 sorry, or clay are certainly guys you're going to want to consider. And, and I think that you're going to want to consider, Draymond, we just have seen this a little bit too much where the ownership kind of flocks a little bit too much. And, and Golden State is not a team where without Curry, it means that everybody is going to go out there and put up 60. They just play good team basketball, and it really could be any one of these guys. I know that's not a great way of, of analyzing something, but it is it is true. And uh, for me, that's why I, I would side with, with, with Poole, who's going to have the ball in his hands a ton. And then I would, I would follow it up with Clay Thompson as my next favorite play. Uh, just again, though, like it's one of those things where keep an eye out for starting lineups. They, they, the Warriors have done a couple weird things at times in these situations and actually brought one of the starters off the bench and like started a tie Jerome a couple times earlier this year. I don't think it's going to happen, but I'm just, just open to looking at it and they don't necessarily need to start Looney. Um, so I'm just kind of curious to see how it goes with them. They, they you might even end up seeing Kaminga starting by the end of the night. I, I don't think so, but it's just. I just, I'm just, it's just on my radar. Um, but as of right now, pool is the clear priority. All, all the other guys look totally good to me. I think Wiggins is being over projected a little bit. So I might, if there was one to fade, I might pick him. If the ownership switches and he's not going to be 40% on, which I think he currently is probably going to be, um, then I'll play him. But as of right now, I have it rated pool, clay, Draymond, Wiggins in that order. And then I like Giddy as the run back. That's probably my favorite. And then again, I mean, like, and like you kind of alluded to, you know, I've seen pool play with like all the guys out. You mm -hmm. could argue, I mean, like it's not exactly the same thing, but if you have guys like Wiggins and, and Clay and Draymond on the court, I mean, you know, pool will probably play better. You know what I mean? And get some, you know, get maybe get, get get like five or six assists when he wouldn't otherwise get zero, right? But he right. wouldn't be able to, to do what he does. You know, when he shoots fifty times a game, either. You know, um, right, right. Uh, and I do. I mean, I, I think Ty Jerome might be like kind of a play anyway um, at three K. Um, he's going to be the backup point guard, isn't he? I mean, I, I don't but know. Like, but like Draymond is really the backup point guard. Guess. And DiVincenzo is also sort of a point guard. Oh, yeah. Okay. So guess. it's just a matter of like the minutes. Like if you tell me Ty Jerome is going to play 28 minutes, I'll have interest. I don't think that's the most likely scenario. I think he probably plays like 20. And I'm just probably going to be off of it. There's just other value. I, I just don't see the need to, to get overly invested there. Yeah. So if you didn't like any of that, um, you, you could – Certainly play Giannis and Lillard together um, on a slate like this. And there's no way I'm going to argue with you. Um, there, you could argue those are the two top projected scorers on the slate. N not exactly, but 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 you could certainly argue it. Um, and they're playing against each other, and and Lillard's at home, which helps him. Um, mm -hmm. And you can get to these guys and it's kind of silly to say, Oh, I can't play these two. You know what I mean? Like, like I have to have a lineup with the two of them in it. I mean, just have to, um, and, and God forbid that game goes to overtime and that that slate's over, you know? Right. Um, so, uh, that's that, uh, other guys, 
Yeah, sure. I mean, you could play Simons, play um, what's his name, Drew Holiday, if you, if you want. But I would probably just stick with um, I'd probably just stick with the two with the, the two big two big guys. Yeah, um, I, I think Giannis is is a tremendous play, and I think you just you just play him tonight. Like, oh, I've got Eubanks. You uh, talk talk to me about Eubanks too. Yeah, Eubanks, but I think the play might be Watford. Um, that's the only thing that I that I want to throw out there. Like, first of all, Watford's been more productive than Eubanks has been lately. Um, you you get the forward eligibility, so you don't have to use the center spot with with you with Watford. But I think I think that I do I do like the idea of, of sort of making one of those guys a priority. Um, <clears throat> as of right now, I guess Eubanks is the more logical choice. But I I think and I don't think he, like it's one of those slates where like. If you told, if you said Eubanks and Watford on literally any other slate, you know, because and we had no Nurkic or whatever, we'd be like, okay, well, that's the autom- you automatically then right. that guy in. Right. In this slate, we don't necessarily need to do that, which is a little weird. But my my inclination would be to try to play one of these guys, and like I said, I, I really like I, I like both of them. I think that Watford, uh, because of the forward eligibility, may get a little bit of a bump over Eubanks for me at first glance. Uh, but I and 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 Lillard is fine in the same way that Shea is fine. Um, raw points do matter, but there's a lot of 8K guys that we mentioned, the Paul George, the D- Darius Garland, Donovan Mitchell. Um, I sort of like the idea of those guys, get, using a couple of those guys with Giannis and then using the value. That's 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 the way that I'm approaching this one. Oh, well, here's another one, by the way. Did, did, you, you forgot to yell at me. I mean, this is like 10, it's like four years in a row we've been doing this. What is it? Uh, when, when I suggest playing Lillard against, against, uh, against what's his name, you tell me not to do that. Um, against Holiday? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I and it, I probably should have said the same thing again today. Um, boy, he makes it. He just makes it uncomfortable, you know, he does. and it doesn't feel like the game where Lillard's gonna gonna have that that monster monster game because, but 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 at the same time, I mean, Lillard is Lillard, and he can go nuts. It's just why do I want to play someone against? I, you could say a lot of guys are the best perimeter defenders. I've heard a lot of names thrown out there. I, I don't care what anybody says. I like Marcus Smart and everything, and I think he's a good defender. I think Drew Holiday is the best perimeter defender, like true guard perimeter defender in the NBA. And I do think that they will put him on Lillard um, and just let it be. You know what I mean? I think maybe sure he'll might end up on Simons a couple possessions, but that's uh, that's to me going to take a little or a little bit out of the game. If we if it was a small slate and we didn't have so much other stuff, I'd be talking about guys like Simons and Jeremy Grant and Josh Hart. But I'm just not going to do it on this particular slate because there's just too much other stuff. But I, I, I mean, it's a good point. I'm glad you reminded me of that. And I mean, I, I went through my list and I have, I have a bunch of guys who sort of are showing up as like priorities early on. So I'm going to have to whittle down uh, Jaden Hardy, Jordan Poole, Josh Green, um, Edmund Sumner, uh, Cam Thomas, uh, one of Garland or Mitchell, one of Watford or Eubanks, um, love Giannis. Um I'm trying to see who else I have on here. If there's nobody I missed, I think those are most of the, most of the guys I have. But I think there's a lot of a lot of uh, there, there's there's a lot of ways you can go where you're spending your money. But the value is pretty clear as to who you want. It's just not necessarily clear. Like like the Nilakina, Jalen, like the guys I'd be fading. You know, Jalen Williams is projecting well early on. So is Nilakina. Um, even Mike Conley. Uh, I like Kelly O, but if he's going to get a bunch of ownership, I'm off completely. Um, Killian Hayes, uh, Shangun. These are the guys I'll probably be underweight on just because I think their range of outcomes is much wider. And we have some guys in situations where maybe it's not them who succeed, but somebody in those games has to. It's almost impossible that they don't. What is what is yeah, what I, I, getting I, ran, I ran an early Saberson build based on the projections that I had, and, and you'll see what I got. I'm, I got, you know, uh, nothing surprising like Jordan Poole and Jaden Hardy up at the top. And then, like you said, I mean, you get these guys that quote unquote project well that you just kind of like know instinctively are not the greatest GPP plays. That being like Frank Nicolina, Mike Conley, you know, um, one guy I, I, I'm just sure that's showing up here that we didn't talk about only because we talked about the game a little bit. For whatever reason, my initial bill would get me like a full 30 percent of Gishon Tate. Um, mm-hmm. part, part of that might be because he has a very low ownership projection as well. Um uh, and like like we said, it is a game that you, you'd like you'd like to play, you know. So, um, do you have any thoughts on him specifically? As long as, just because I have him up here, I, I don't understand why Jay Sean Tate is projecting well today. Yeah. Okay. Even with Jalen Green out, like people weren't playing him, and 
for good reason. Jean Tate hasn't put up like, you know, he, he has a 26 fantasy point game in there. I actually like it. Like I was the one who was saying that maybe we should be playing him and I, and I, it didn't work out because he only played 20 minutes the other night when I was talking about playing him. But that was because he runs sort of the point guard a little bit with Jalen Green out. I'm I'm just not getting there personally. Okay. Um, but but there's just, there's just too many other values for me to consider these borderline guys. But however, I want to point out, Sheets is one person, and and we have many others who have who have won big tournaments with taking guys who maybe not the sexiest value, like when you won with Josh Richardson. Yeah. So maybe playing some of I'm not saying I don't I don't think Deshaun Tate is the guy for me. But maybe playing some of these other, you know, these other values that are going to be a little bit lower owned, um, which I thought Olenek would be at first. And now I see the projections just gone through the roof. But Eubanks and, and Watford are not projecting as well as you think because they sort of are cutting into each other. Um, so so playing those guys, you actually might be more off the board than you think. Um, and we're going to have to see a little bit later today. There's still a lot of Q tags on the board. Um, but I, I really like the idea of the Giannis with a couple 8K guys and then the value that I like, this, this, the Sumner, Cam Thomas, Jaden Hardy. And I'm going to have to wait till later because of the Q tags to try to decide which games I want to stack because it, there are plenty of games like Sacramento and Houston looking like a, an incredible game to stack. I don't know yet if I if I, if I want to do that because there's just so many good other guys you have to give up if you want to play four guys from any game today. So that's, I guess, a quick little glance and, and may, maybe by the end of the day, it's plant you're ending with four nets and and one of the guys on with, with, with two Dallas and, and, and Paul George is a run back with Giannis or something that just seems like it's going to happen for some people. I would, I just want to reemphasize that Nilakina and the, the, and is, is that just beware of the suspect value when you have this kind of potential great value. We've seen Nilakina going back to his Knicks days, play 32 minutes in games and put up eight fantasy points and uh, that's completely on the table. And Dallas is probably going to get smoked. That's the other thing that makes this a little bit nerve wracking. If they were playing at home and if it wasn't Utah at altitude and stuff, I might even be a little, I might be a little bit higher, but I'm trying to keep my, my right now, my Mavs exposure just down to the, to the guys who are potentially shot creators. And that, that being, you know, either Hardy or, and, or um, Josh Green with, with maybe one of, Christian Wood, if he plays, or or I think Hardaway is a little bit more suspect um, than than these guys are. So, so it should be an interesting one. Uh, we're gonna have a bunch of wild slates, you know, going leading into the Super Bowl, and then then next week with the uh, the All Star break and all that. So, uh, but I, I think the guys you've got up there on your board are is a, is a good place to start, and then you mix in the Dallas and figure out where to go from there. All right, we'll see you at six o'clock. See everybody live at six o'clock, and uh, let's make some money today, everybody. All right, see you then.